First Bank. Welcome to Business News. The Delta State Government has rolled out the first phase of the two billion dollar CBN micro, small and medium enterprise development funds. The Governor of the State, Emmanuel Udoa, says beneficiaries of the fund will be able to access it at 0% interest rate as against the 9% fixed by the CBN because the State Government will be paying off the interest rate. Our human resources professionals have been encouraged to embrace continuous self-development through studies and experience sharing, as this can bring about best practices in their places of work. President and Chairman of the Council of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, Mr. Victor Famuibu, made a call at the Institute's 18th induction ceremony. This gathering at the Civic Center in Lagos is a special event for members of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management of Nigeria, new inductees joining the Institute. As members of this prestigious professional body, it is expected that you will strive at all times to acquire, you will strive at all times to develop and to deploy the best of HR functional competences. As human capital professionals, you should strive to command the due respect our profession deserves. Over 155 new members are inducted into the Institute through the HR practitioner's route, while over 550 graduating students are received through professional examination. The guest speaker, Mr. Tomini Oni, who is the HR Director, Friesland Campina, Wamco, Nigeria, PLC, encourages knowledge sharing among HR professionals. The basic economic resource, like uh, Peter Drucker put it, is not a uh, labor, it's not capital. It is knowledge. And it is only organizations who manage it effectively that will be here in 100 years to come and beyond. That's because the knowledge you have yesterday, tomorrow, becomes obsolete. For the new associates, they are the first inductees who will be receiving the HR license, and this the president and chairman of the council explains. With the practitioner's license, we can then be sure that whoever has been certified as a true professional by the Institute of Personnel Management uh, is the one carrying that license. And the license also has a validity period of three years. So it will put the minds of employers at rest that they are employing true professionals and not quacks. It is the third time this year that the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management will be admitting new members bringing the total number of inductees this year to over 1,000. The Nigeria equities market sustained the positive momentum recorded last week as the All Share Index began the week 0.30% higher at 35,488.80. Let's join BC Adibayo for a summary of the day's closing figures. And welcome to the stock markets reports. The Nigeria equities market sustained the positive momentum recorded last week as key indicators rose further on the first trading day of the week. Not even losses recorded by market heavyweight Dangote Cement was able to drag down the All Share Index as it appreciated by 0.30% to 35,488.80. Market capitalization also grew to 11.75 trillion naira. On the advances list, Nigeria Brewies added 2 naira 83 copper ahead of 40 oil and PZ, which gained 2 naira 2 copper and 1 naira respectively. On the flip side, Saplet shared 3 naira 2 copper, followed by Okomo oil and Dangote cement. On the volume chart, Transcore raked in over 41 billion shares ahead of Zenith Bank and FBN Holdings. 
At the end of the trading session, the total volume stood at 198.85 million shares, valued at 2.33 billion naira, and exchanged in 4,236 deals. And that ends the stock market reports. I am BC Adibayo. And that's the business news. The news at 10 continues shortly. Welcome to Sports News. The Nigeria Taekwondo Federation has commended all 16 taekwondoists who participated at the just-concluded 6th Commonwealth Taekwondo Championships held in Edinburgh, Scotland. Nigeria picked nine medals to record the country's best performance in international championships, surpassing the three gold, one silver and one bronze, one of the 1987 All-Africa Games. On the final day of the championship, Nigeria won four gold, one silver, and four bronze medals to finish among the top four teams at the championship. Now, apart from clinching one of the tickets for the CAF Champions League next year, Global Premier League champions Candle Pillars will receive 15 million naira from the league management company for emerging champions. The LMC said 75 million naira will be distributed among 20 clubs that participated in the 2013-2014 season, an increase from the 50 million naira that was shared among clubs the previous season. In Europe, the English Football Association has been urged to lobby UEFA for a European boycott of the 2018 World Cup to be hosted by Russia unless FIFA implements meaningful reforms. Former FA chairman David Bernstein said it was time for drastic action to be taken against the world football governing body, who he claims lacks credibility. And that's it on Sports News. It's back to Amarachi with the rest of the news at 10. U.S. President Barack Obama has condemned the killing of U.S. aid worker Abdul Rahman Kasig, calling it an act of pure evil. The militant group ISIS released a video showing a masked man standing over a severed head with the White House confirmed which the White House confirmed as Mr. Kasik. Western intelligence officials are trying to identify the Islamic State militant seen in the video that showed the beheading. According to the French Interior Minister, one of the militants is likely to be a 22-year-old French man named Maxim Houchard. Another is reportedly a Briton, but his father says it's unclear the video shows his son, who could be a 20-year-old Nasser Muthana. Kasik was just 26 years old when he was killed. And the main news again. The federal government today extended the state of emergency imposed in Yobe, Borno and Adamawa states for another six months in continuation of its search for lasting peace in the northeast. Militants group in Ugidigbe, Ugidigbe believed to be loyal to former militant leader Tom Polo today attacked Channel's television crew and other journalists who were in Delta State to cover the botched flag off of the gas industrial park. And investigators have begun hunts for the killers of American Abdul Rahman Kasig. As an easy 10 tonight, thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Rabani. Good night.